Welcome back to Third Age Reforged, and I know that I said it would be a wintry Minas Tirith battle next, but unfortunately that one, there are a few issues with that one, which I think were more technical than the actual battle itself, but maybe we'll still see that one, but it's kind of unlikely, but I do have a replacement for it in the works anyway. I've been given a another wintry themed siege battle, which I'm assured of the quality of, and also it will work, I think, more so, at least I checked it and it should work, so... For the time being though, I do only have time to do a smaller, or a shorter battle I should say, which is going to be a free-for-all on Karasant, which is one of the better maps for a free-for-all because the settlement is kind of in the middle, and it's a lot less conducive to camp on this map than it is on some other free-for-all maps. And also it's got features on it which I like, I'm not too, I'm not really a big fan of the just flat open field battles, but regardless. We'll get on to the players and the army compositions, and I'm actually in this one, which I want to do more of, because I do think I've lost that a little bit lately, as I've said in the previous videos. So, we have Hadnix playing as Dole Amroth, and he's my ally, and he's got a front line of Blackroot Vale archers. Now, these guys will do kind of poorly in a skirmish fight, but their missile damage is pretty solid, so... Provided that they don't get focused down too heavily by a skirmish-heavy faction, they should perform quite well. And then in behind them we have the mighty Ed Holland Halberdiers. These guys are going to be very effective at holding the line, of course, particularly against armoured units. So if we're facing down armoured factions, and as I'm sure you can see, one of the players is definitely intent on attacking our position, the Halberdiers are going to need to hold the line pretty efficiently if we're going to survive an onslaught from two players at once, particularly seeing as my army's kind of lagging behind a little bit. We also have some Dole Amroth Manor Arms back here again, probably the most effective of the human Manor Arms units, or, well, the human mid-tier infantry units, the sword and board type things. Again, they have slightly more men in the unit than the Arthur Dane Manor Arms, which I do think makes the difference, and they're also very cheap, 550 florins each, I believe, which is not bad at all for a unit which can perform as well as these guys. And then back here, of course, we have the armor-piercing arrows of the Nimradel Rangers, of course. These guys are very susceptible to being skirmished down, however, Imrahil is actually in this unit, so... The Dole Amroth General being in such a squishy unit is different, but it also does open up the Cav to be used a little bit more aggressively. And of course, Dole Amroth has brought the majority of the heavy Cav on our team. We've got two units of Knights of the Silver Swan. It should be good enough to face down most Cav forces. If Rohan or Kand has brought a very comprehensive Cav force, then they will struggle. But other than that, there's not really much that any faction can do against Dole Amroth. And then we also have some Dole Amroth Archers up here on the higher ground, and they are also backed up by a couple of units of Men at Arms, a unit of Talon Knights as well, so there's the elite infantry force of Dole Amroth. And also up here he's got some more cavalry, two units of Tirithea Knights, they aren't quite as strong as the Knights of the Silver Swan of course, but they are still good for numbers. Move on to my army next, seeing as I'm on his team. I've got less of a cavalry force, but I will be able to speak about my pick in more detail and my thinking behind it. I've got two units of mounted bath ready Dunedain. These guys do have hit points. They aren't quite as solid in melee as sort of the more heavy cavalry of the other human factions, stuff like the Knights of the Numenas or the Rohan Nobles or something like that. They're much more akin to the Royal Guard of Rohan. However, the fact that you can have a very fast unit like this, particularly if you have the Dunedain bodyguard as well, because they have the same speed, you can have a force of three cavalry units that are this fast with hit points, which I don't think any other faction can boast other than maybe Kand. But even that's debatable I think because I think that all of their cataphract units are very slow and yeah so I've actually got a newfound appreciation of Ariador recently of course their cav force is not going to be good in going toe to toe with something like Arnor or Rohan or Khand of course but if you want to micro your cav more intensely these guys I think are an even more effective version of the serpent bodyguard backed up by two serpent guard just because of the hit points that really is the kingmaker in terms of cavalry and again I could have brought that because unfortunately my pick was more based around being going around the flank with some ambush infantry, but unfortunately on this map it's not really conducive with the with the terrain I was given. But I also have a full complement of Cardinal and Footman. This is something I'm a big fan of bringing when you're Ariador, because they're very cheap, they're also very effective in melee. Even more vulnerable to arrows than most other pikemen, however, because their armor is not very solid. But you can bring so many of them that a cavalry force is gonna have real trouble routing you from the field. And Ariador are pretty good at dealing with cavalry, all things considered, despite the fact that cavalry is still kind of overly powerful I think in the current patch and I do I can't wait for the cavalry to be given more of a change and be more reasonable but regardless the cardinal and footman was kind of my answer it's most of our forces anti-cavalry is going to be in my army to be honest with you as well as the cavalry of Dol Amroth and two units of forest gatekeepers these guys are kind of the ultimate anti-cavalry unit in the current patch 
because of course their crossbow bolts are capable of dealing extreme damage to even the stronger cav units and in melee of course they do have a pretty significant anti-cav bonus as well they are in my opinion the best of area doors current units and they are very expensive of course 1000 each for a unit without hit points is a big investment but their attack and their anti-cavalry capabilities i think is more than worth it i've also got three units of dunadine rangers as my sort of long range contingent and they will be backing up Dol Amroth's archer line to force the enemy to come to us although that was the idea doesn't look like that's going to be necessary because we're going to be charged right from the off I also have a unit of forest shell captains with my general in it I believe actually no my general's in the cavalry and I've got another unit of battle ready to do so these are my elite infantry units to back up my pikes in case they start to struggle and then here we have my hidden death squad and unfortunately there was a 1v1 where I used this death squad very effectively, but I didn't save the replay, and it's not really worth showing a 1v1. Um, but I've got two units of Thieves of Tharbad, which are essentially diet versions of Hashari. They will die far more quickly because they don't have as good a stats, but they are still very good against low armor units, and very low tier units will melt to the Thieves of Tharbad. So I've got two units of those. I've got two units of Bandits as well, just to be fodder to protect the more important units in the Hidden Death Squad. And then I've also got a unit of Blackwalds to deal with the armor that the Thieves of Tharbad cannot. And I've also got a unit of bandit javelins here. They aren't hidden, but I'm just going to keep them with my army to try and again ward off cavalry. So unfortunately on this map though, there isn't really a lot of room to manoeuvre for my hidden death squad. So I'm just going to have to sort of bide their time in the back and hope that the frontal assault can last and then maybe they can do something later on in the game. So moving on to the other teams, we have LVG Spartano playing as the Orcs of the Misty Mountains. And of course, they're very... The Orcs are always going to be pretty good at rushing, so they're going to be going for Dol Amroth right away. He's got some heavy goblin spears down at the end. A central force of Black Oryx the Mountain is going to be pretty decent at going toe-to-toe -to -toe with armoured units, although less so the Halberdiers, it must be said. And he's also got some heavy goblin crossbowmen. If they don't get focused down, they can do extreme damage to Dol Amroth. And then behind them, a couple of units of the Black Watch Legion, which of course they're going to be able to stand up to Dol Amroth's arrow fire pretty effectively as well. And if he can get into the lines, he'll be able to push the Halberdiers out of the way. And then his general's unit is an orc bodyguard unit, as is customary for the Misty Mountains. He's also got some snow trolls back here, of course. Nice to have the brute force that they offer. And then up here, he's got his cavalry force, Bulg's champions and war riders, two units of them. So they could do pretty well, honestly, against the Dol Amroth cavalry force, considering that only two of them have hit points. But with my cavalry as well, these guys are in a bit of danger of being completely overwhelmed. But if, if his ally can get up and help him, and of course I'm playing along, well, he's playing alongside WK, who's playing as Umbar. Umbar are a little bit of a weird faction in the current patch. I, I hope that they're made a little bit more effective in the next patch because I do think the idea behind them is pretty solid. But at the moment, based on the fact that infantry is really at the bottom of the pecking order with regards to the, the triumvirate of infantry, cavalry and archers, it's, it's kind of unfortunate for Umbar because they can't really get a lot done in a field battle. But in this sort of situation where there's a lot more terrain for them to take advantage of, their infantry can be very effective. The Corsair Warriors are a decent mainline unit, although they are susceptible to being overwhelmed because there aren't very many in a unit. Meanwhile, at the front here, he's got some more elite units. He's got the Belagir Halberdiers. They will be decent at going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Edelon Halberdiers, provided they've been weakened. He's also got some Warlords of Umbar again. They One-to-one, -one, they should beat my cavalry pretty handily, but the Knights of the Silver Swan will override them, I think, both of them together. The Corsair Blackguards are an incredibly potent javelin unit, so if they get into close range and then get into melee, they will be a very deadly force to be reckoned with against Dol Amroth's infantry. He's also got some Abra Zanim Naduba Wib, or Naduba Rib. Something like that. Nadu Bawib. Okay, that's the one that I'm going to need to get used to the most, to be honest with you. I'm still getting that one wrong. I've got the other ones down just enough. But yes, these guys are decently armoured, and they should be able to stand up more to the Blackroot Veil fire, but the Nimrodale Rangers will shred these guys if they get into range. He's also got a unit of Harbingers of Castamere. Again, this is not going to be WK's general unit. He's more of a fan of putting it in a lesser unit, but these guys are very efficient, especially against lightly armoured targets. And then around here, I know that he's got some hidden units, but he's gone for a bit more of a... Over here we've got some Merchant Militia as well. Obviously these guys are not going to be dreadfully effective. Is that it? Or is there some units in here? Yes, there are some units in this little fort over here. I do like Karasant with all its little nooks and crannies. He's got some Corsair Savages, some very aggressive infantry. Some Abrazani Naduzagar and the Corsairs Fencers. So he's got some very elite forces indeed. Now moving on to the final alliance, we have Dale being played by Master Blaster. He's got the Avari Elder Archers and some Lake Town Pikemen. And again, this avenue of death over here, it's, it's very clear why they're going for us. Obviously, Dale and the Dwarves as an alliance are very effective at holding a line, so I don't blame the Misty Mountains and Umbar for going for us instead. He's got some Royal Guardsmen, more Lake Town Pikes, and then a lot of Lake Town infantry and pikemen going back here, just forming up row after row of defence. And then he's got some Dalesmen, 
more dalesmen back there and more lake town spearmen so he's definitely gone for a more quantity based army and then he's got some earls paladins and sword masters i know he's got some cavalry around here as well and indeed here they are he's got some units of earls of course i could have deployed over here but that would have split up me from my ally and i wasn't really too keen on doing that then we have bobo 16k who's mixed all of his army together so i'll go through it very quickly we have some Ironfoot Warriors, he's got some Ironfoot Pikemen, some Ironfoot Guard. I'm sure that he's got some very elite infantry in here as well. He's got some Hammers of Gundavad, and he's got some Mithril Guard, Guards of Khazad-dum. So yeah, all of the best units, and over there he's got some Ironfoot Crossbowmen. So you can see that over here the Dwarves and Dale are going to have to get their hustle on, because while this isn't a scored resolution, because I forgot to set it to, all free-for-alls in spirit are a scored resolution. And they're going to they're gonna need to close the gap pretty quickly, because... The Misty Mountains and Umbar are pretty intent on attacking our position, but the Blackroot Vale Archers are going to open fire immediately on the Misty Mountains position as they advance. And the best thing the Misty Mountains can do is get into the faces of Dol Amroth pretty quickly, because Dol Amroth, honestly, aside from their cavalry, the Halberdiers and the Talon Knights are really what's going to be holding the line. The Men at Arms also give some numbers to that, but if the Misty Mountains can get into the face of Dol Amroth and then Umbar back them up, Umbar's infantry line could be in a bit of trouble. Because both factions have got some pretty nice tools to deal with all of this. But unfortunately, if we look over here, we can see that the crossbowmen have sort of come out. Loose formation, honestly, it, it helps a little bit. But you can see that all the arrows that are missing are kind of going into the black uruks in the back. So he's doing damage to something regardless. And the crossbows, unfortunately, are getting melted by the Dol Amroth skirmish line. But we can see that over here, he's very keen to engage the Dol Amroth cavalry quite quickly, trying to shut them down so that he can move his infantry up without fear of being charged, which is understandable. The Dol Amroth shock cavalry is very potent. We can see that these walk riders getting into these knights of the Silver Swan, but they do need to surround them if they're going to be successful here, and that does look like what they're trying to do. The Bulk's champion is trying to go in from behind. We can see that the Tirithea knights are trying to come down and recharge the walk riders in response to this. Again, the Warlords of Umbar's help was really required if they were going to do this, because unfortunately the the Dol Amroth Cavalry, despite the Wargs being dedicated anti-cavalry, again, Knights of the Silver Swan being one of those very strong cavalry units, is able to just sort of tank through the anti-cav damage and win, which is something that I do hope does change in the next patch. The, the superiority of the very heavily armoured Knights is a little bit overly powered, I think. But here we can see that I'm just going to recharge the Bolg's Champions with one of my units of mounted battle ready Dunedain, just to try and get rid of them very quickly. And again, their charge bonus is very high. So it's going to do a lot of damage off the bat. And the Bulk's Champions are nearly all gone. So I decided to pull out. I only lost one of my Cav units in that in that little engagement. Because I want to save mine for later on. Because I have noticed that there is other Cav on the field. The Knights of the Silver one did take losses. Don't get me wrong. But the Wargs were still kind of just chewed up. You can see the Edholond Halberdiers are actually taking some crossbow fire. We can see that these Snow Trolls are here. So the Misty Mountains are kind of just forming up. They are taking quite a lot of skirmish fire as this is going on however. But Umbar are now getting into position with their Abrazani which should do a decent amount of damage. You can see these Dol Amroth archers are coming in. The Snow Trolls are over here as well. The Warlords of Umbar are sort of menacingly on this flank. And there are the hidden Blackback Berserkers, as is customary when you're facing the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, and Dol Amroth Men at Arms will do very badly against them. Again, the, the Blackback Berserkers shred through armoured units, and armoured units without hit points, they just go through them like they weren't even there. So the Dol Amroth Men at Arms will fall pretty quickly, and in sustained combat the Tirithea Knights will also lose out very heftily and now they're also being charged by Warlords of Umbar so these Tirithea Knights they survived the wargs but they're not going to survive this engagement unless they get out of there pretty quickly you can see the Dol Amroth Archers trying to fall back from this fight because you can see over here the Tirithea Knights getting ripped apart by a unit of Blackback Berserkers not a single kill yet and despite the downhill charge the Talon Knights are in here though so the Talon Knights will do better but even they will take some pretty significant losses to the Blackbacks Definitely the sort of thing you want to focus down with skirmish fight if at all possible. So if my ally can get those Dol Amroth archers firing, we should be in a pretty good place. However, as you can see over here, the mainline infantry fight has engaged. The trolls getting into the fight with the Dol Amroth man at arms, and they'll do a decent job. You can see the Tirithea knights switching their target to the trolls. Not really the best charge though, because they were kind of blocked by their own infantrymen, and there are also Blackwatch legionnaires on the way. You can see the frame rate starting to struggle with all of these all of these units clashing all at once and you can see that my forces have now arrived to back them up so I've got my Cardland footman in behind the Dol Amroth shield wall and this is the best place for pikes and it does also sort of shut down the trolls trying to push through our line and the Blackwatch Legion probably won't be able to push through either with my Cardland footman in shield wall of course the Cardland footman are a lighter pike unit but they will still do the job here 
You can see these Corsair Warriors right in front of the line, not being targeted by the Archers, of course, though, because it's not really worth it. As we can see, Umbar just sort of filtering across the bridge. They could, and they are, in fact, sort of going down and around here. Some of these areas, the, the grey doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean you can't go up there. There are a few roads that you can use to flank into the lines. You can see the Black Watch Legion are moving up, and they're also going to be reinforced by these Corsair Warriors. So this aggressive push, again, they don't... I do admire this because it does mean that if they stayed where they were, they were in the most disadvantageous position because they were going to be surrounded because the river cut us off from attacking the Dale and the Dwarves. So really this was the best thing that Umbar and the Misty Mountains could have done was to really just get right into the face of someone. And I do admire WK, he's always very aggressive, which I do like. I don't like people who are overly defensive. It, it kind of, I can understand why, but it's slow and it's boring and it's not really in the spirit of, of the game really in my opinion. But here we can see that the Edelon Halberdier is trying to hold the line against these Corsair Warriors. The Blackwatch Legion just sort of went around and I saw the Blackwatch Legion trying to get into our back line so instead what I decided to do was charge in with my Forest Shell Captains. And we can see that up here the fight is still going on the Blackback Berserkers. They've lost a few men now to the Talon Knights but unfortunately this cycle charging from the Warlords of Umbar again that was a pretty tame charge but they were still able to kill quite a few men in that charge. And now those those Dole Amroth Man at Arms over there were completely eviscerated. You can see that I'm trying to sort of get my mounted battle ready Dunedain into the Warlords of Umbar to try and stop them from cycle charging the Talon Knights. Because at this point things were going pretty poorly for us. On this flank anyway. In the centre our line is holding pretty well. But the Blackback Berserkers unfortunately just too strong. And again I tried to cycle, I tried to charge into them but it was a very tame charge so I decided to get out of there very quickly because you saw what happened to the Tirithea Knights, Blackback Berserkers and Sustain Melee ripped through remains. cavalry. You can see at this point the Warlords of Umbar are trying to get away. They are significantly slower than my cab, although in a one-to-one -one engagement they will win. But I'm able to get a very nice pincer charge on those Warlords there. And with the charge from both ends, the Warlords of Umbar should melt to the charge bonus and then I should just be able to overwhelm them with pure numbers. Normally the area door cavalry is not able to stand up to the really heavily armoured stuff like the Warlords of Umbar. But in this situation, because I was able to get that nice pincer charge off, I was able to just about win that fight. Also over here you can see that my bandits have been sent up because I did notice the Blackback Berserkers were kind of pushing through. So despite the fact that they are kind of being charged by the Warlords of Umbar, the Warlords of Umbar are about to die. I'm just sort of sending in my bandits to help the Talonites and act as a bit more of a meat shield buffer for them. As you can see the frame rate's suffering a little bit with all of the unit models in close concentration over here. You can see that these heavy goblin spears have managed to get into the side of my cardinal and footman. Which is unfortunate but the pikes will hold. Again this is one of the really good things about area doors pikemen is they will hold regardless. They won't get very many kills, but they do offer a nice solid centre to your line. Which you do need, like there's there's no way that you can survive in the current patch in a one versus one without having some sort of solidity to your front line. But again, infantry is still at the bottom of the packing order currently, I think. And you can see over here the Corsair Savages en masse attacking these Adelon Halberdiers. Victory still seems certain for them though, this is the strength of the Adelon Halberdiers. But the Corsair Savages, they should still win through sheer numbers. And of course the Corsair Fences are going to rearcharge these Halberdiers as well, which is going to be very bad news for them. You can see that my Dunedain Rangers are trying to focus down these Black Guards because the Black Guards were able to get off a few decent volleys into my Forest Shell Captains. But the Forest Shell Captains and my Battle Ready Dunedain are doing a good job against this flanking force of Black Watch Legion. So our front line is holding very nicely against the, the Umbar and Misty Mountains Assault. Our flanks are being pressured a little bit more. But fortunately our archers have managed to sort of shut down the, the, the Black Guards and the Harbingers of Castamere. But really it's on this flank that we were struggling. Now that the Warlords of Umbar are gone, hopefully we'll be able to turn this fight around a little bit more. Again, over here I'm trying to sort of occupy this unit of Blackwatch Legion so that they can't surround the Talon Knights with just my bandits. But I realise my bandits alone won't win this fight, so I'm actually bringing up some bandit javelins. And you can see that the, the Black... The Blackback Berserkers are not the most heavily armoured unit in the world, but Javelins are still very potent. You can see a volley into the back, so there was 47 of them just there. 46, 40, you know, that's a decent amount of kills in one volley. And actually I do think that the, the little tooltip flips to being defeat is a distinct possibility for the Blackback Berserkers, and they're only in melee against bandits, remember. So this is the power of cheap Javelins. The Snaga Skirmishers are a very similar sort of thing to the Bandit Javis. But as you can see in the background here, Dale has arrived in, to occupy the position that Umbar once occupied and the Earls are on the way forward. The Earls of course very heavily armoured. My cavalry doesn't really stand much of a chance in melee against them. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and Dol Amroth's cavalry is largely spent at this point. The Blackback Berserkers were able to deal with the Tirithea Knights, and the Wargs were able to weaken the, the Knights of the Silver Swan to the point where I think they've all been killed at this point. You can see here the the Earls trying to move forward, and on my mounted battle ready do I will at least sort of hold them in place for a little while. You can see they're charging in, they're actually charging into the backs of the Umbar Misty Mountains forces. And it's only Dol Amroth archers here, really. He does need to be careful of my pikes. I still have a comprehensive pike force here. Which is going to be bad news for them if they um, if they linger too long near the pikes. You can see here on the front line. It's a very grindy fight that's been going on for a long time between all of these very low attack, high defense units. The Cardinal and Footman, the Dol Amroth men and the Black Watch Legion. But there aren't enough of the Misty Mountains forces to really in effect and advance through all of these pikes now is very unfortunate for them and the flanking force has largely been dealt with the orc bodyguards are still here but if they do get committed my battle ready do not die and my forest shell captains will be there to block them and then our archers will be there to finish them off to a point you can see that my cavalry is sort of running around the flank over there unfortunately for me however you can see that the earls charged in and again in a scored resolution kind of thing something squishy like the bandits is too good a target to pass up for the earls Unfortunately, this does mean these black back berserkers are free again, although there is only 13 of them. You can see that these black back berserkers have managed to fight a whole unit of Talon Knights and a unit of Dol Amroth men at arms basically to a standstill while fighting uphill. That's the power of them. Very effective indeed. WK's Merchant Militia. Oof, that, that frame rate. What is going on there? But yes, WK's Merchant Militia is sort of going around the flank, and I think what he wants to do is get into my Dunedain Rangers. Although, to be honest with you, Merchant Militia probably still aren't good enough to beat Dunedain Rangers in melee. Rangers have got more skill. Considerably more skill, in fact. You can see here, these Earls are going to get into another charging position. But they are taking a ton of fire. You can see that basically all of our skirmishes, look at that. And again, this does actually prove the strength of cavalry. I mean, look at that. Basically, none of them died to that. Which, again, in terms of archers, is maybe how it should be. But again, it's really the hit points that are doing that at the moment. You can see, I think even the Nimrodel Rangers are firing in there. And the Nimrodel Rangers are probably the things which are getting the kills, to be honest with you, but you can see that the Earls are really medieval tanks, which is what they should be. They are very slow, after all. And you can see, up here, I've got my forces of Mounted Battle Ready, Dunedain, and Bandit Javelins, my sort of hoping to bait the Earls into a fight so that I can use my Javis. At least that's the idea. You can see the frame rate kind of goes all to hell when I, when I focus down over here. WK's Merchant Militia is wavering and exhausted, too far behind enemy lines, and they are, they're they being defeated by the Dunedain Rangers, unfortunately enough, for them. Oof, that frame rate though. I think it's because of all the marching units in the background going across the bridges. Again, bridges kill the frame rate in this game. Orcs Bodyguards. To be honest with you, when making a map, I would say just scrap the bridges, because they really don't work, and just do river crossings. It might not look as impressive, but it sure as hell makes it play so much better. And we can see these all bodyguards getting into these battle-ready Dunedain. Going to finish them off very quickly. My forest shell captains are in the background there. My hidden death squad is still hidden. Hopefully I'm going to be able to... Men have slain the enemy general. Well, there goes the harbingers of Castamere general. Did WK have his general in a, an elite unit? That's heresy. Where are they? Ah, they're over here. You can see that the... The Dalian horde of Lake Town units is coming forward. And the Harbingers of Castamere is going to be able to cut their way through units like this all day long. Harbingers of Castamere, you, you wouldn't think so to look at how outnumbered they are, but they will win this fight if they aren't backed up. The Dalesmen will do maybe slightly better, but only very slightly. But more of the Dales sort of elite units, like the Athala Rangers with their, their missiles, are going to be shooting into the sides. Some Pikemen and the Avari Elder Archers, yeah, they're focusing down the Harbingers of Castamere, which means they will lose now. So WK's rear position, of course, that was the thing. If you charge in, like they did, you're always going to leave your, your rear exposed. And they weren't able to get through our front line quickly enough. But they were still able to get quite a few kills, particularly on my allies' front line. Again, my pikes also took quite a lot of attritional casualties. See, these Dole Amroth men at arms defeat seems certain. I got my I got my forest shell captains in here as well, but there are a lot of orc bodyguards, so we're going to need a little bit more reinforcements. Fortunately, another force of Dole Amroth men at arms is coming in. And also my Dunedain Rangers, which are starting to run out of ammo, are now able to use as makeshift infantrymen. Men have slain the enemy general. And there goes the Misty Mountains General. My forest shell captain's in there. I think that we've missed it, but my cavalry, and it does really prove how strong the melee cavalry, the Earls are in melee. They managed to finish off both my units 
I've mounted battle ready Dunedain. So I did try and do what I did to the Warlords of Umbar to Dale, but unfortunately I was only able to get a partial surround off and my javelins weren't able to reinforce. And you saw how tanky the Earls were. Dedicated melee carve, and that's the real Achilles heel of my fast moving mounted battle ready Dunedain. They just aren't as good in sustained melee as something like Earls. And of course you can see that we have been victorious here on the front line, and I do still have a pretty healthy amount of pikemen left. Unfortunately for us though, we do still have to deal with Dale and their skirmish is going to be able to rip my pike line apart, so I'm trying to sort of reposition it. And in terms of winning this battle, Dale and the Dwarves are pretty much guaranteed the, the physical victory at this point because both the alliances of Umbar and the Misty Mountains and my team kind of ground themselves up against one another and Dale are only just now sort of committing their infantry to melee and the Dwarves are behind even them. So you can see that the dwarves are kind of way over there in the back. They still have to get across these bridges, and you can see that the, the frame rate really doesn't like the bridges. So I'm gonna I'm gonna not focus on that. We're gonna not look in the direction of the bridges at all. That was what ruined that Temple of Sauron replay that I did, despite it being a super close one. We can see that all these Abrazani, Narduzagar, and the Harbingers of Casper are trying to get away. Again, the Earls are trying to block them. But again, this is the thing, like, I think that Dale and the Dwarves were hoping for a bit more of a defensive fight or at least a fight that happened in the settlement, which was on their terms. And Umbar and Misty Mountain, despite the fact they kind of lost the fight against us, they denied them that, which is potentially a good thing. And you can see that my pikes, I'm trying to sort of move them into position where I can, I can get after some of Dale's Earls, I think. See those Adelon Halberdiers here, the Black Root Vale Archers. Our army is kind of scattered at this point. That's one thing that the Umbar and Misty Mountain's assault did do. It kind of, kind of scattered our forces. And again, I do still have a pretty healthy amount of Cardinal and Footman. But in terms of infantry, that's kind of all we have left. Dol Amroth's forces are very depleted. They took the brunt of the the Misty Mountain's wrath, it must be said. They do still have some Dol Amroth men at arms back here. I do also have some Forest Shell Captains, my Dunedain Rangers. I do still have my Hidden Squad as well. But again, there's not really... like One of the, the reasons I wanted to use it was to sort of sneak them around the flank. But there's really nothing I can do. If I put them up on this hill, they're going to be isolated. And I was hoping to sort of use them in the settlement. I was hoping to sort of send them around the settlement and then hit someone in the rear. Because it worked very well against Lothlorien in a 1v1 I did, but hopefully I'll be able to use the Hidden Death Squad again to a bit more, to a greater effect, how they were designed to be used. But they will still be used later on in this battle. And of course this is a slightly shorter one, but this is all I have time for at the moment. I do like Karasant as well. I think we will revisit this map at some point. Because I do want to have a battle, a free-for-all in particular, that takes place in the streets as well as in the outside. But this one is still worth showing because it does necessitate the need for a bit of haste in your army compositions. And Dale and the Dwarves are very slow moving, most of their armies, and they were not able to really get into the fight quickly enough. And that's the issue that you, you kind of have when you go for a free-for-all. Again, being defensive can work in that last battle that I showed as a free-for-all where I was playing as Rohan. You know, the, the very defensive, overly defensive in many ways, the force that noob boxed won because all of the forces went for them. However, most of the time in a free-for-all you do need to be quick. You need to get into the action very quickly because it's scored resolution most of the time. And again, this one should have been scored resolution. I just forgot to set it. You can see my card and footman. I'm trying not to, to go near the bridges because the dwarves are crossing the bridge on mass, so I'm going to have to look this way. You can see my cardinal footmen are going to try and get into melee, but they, against the lightly armoured Lake Town units, they will do pretty well. But as soon as the skirmishes get turned on them, they're going to die. Imrahil killed by the sword masters of Dale. Ugh, no, 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 not the bridges. God, I hate the bridges. And the Earls, they're able to finish off one of my very depleted units of cardinal footmen. Again, the charge of every heavy cavalry unit is very lethal. See, there's a unit of 26 Earls back here. This is the, the Cav Force, I think, which took on my Cavalry Force. Or is it? I can't remember. This might be the one which took on the Arrow Fire. One of the two. And you can see they're going to rear charge my Cardinal and Footman. And provided Cavalry can kill the Pike unit entirely in one charge, the Pikes will not be able to do a significant amount of damage to them. What's going on over here? You can see that this is my, this is my Hidden Squad. Of course, the Bandits are not a part of the Hidden Squad anymore. I do like the Thieves of Tharbad. They look really cool. They're like Dunedain Rangers, but with darker cloaks, and they have these sickles. And they are very fast as well, lethally fast. Is what makes them very useful, in my opinion. So I'm trying to sort of get them into position to try and maybe hit Dale in the side. But unfortunately, these Abrazani Narduba women, I think the Athala Rangers do see them, so I'm forced to pull them back, because one of the really big Achilles heel of my hidden murder squad 
is all of them are extremely susceptible to arrows. They've got very low defense values and very low, well, I think zero armor values. You can see that my, my gatekeepers, you can see this is the power of the gatekeepers and crossbows in general. They will kill cavalry because of their armor piercing missiles and their stopping power. They also have body piercing, I think, which is something rangers will get in the next patch, albeit with non-AP missiles. You can see that these elves finally getting their just desserts for running around all over our lines, all indestructible and such. And again, I do think that heavy cavalry is 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 one of the problems with the current patch. It's one of, I don't really like the meta as it is currently, to be brutally honest, because of how things are balanced. But you know, the next patch hopefully will fix that. But the gatekeepers are genuinely one of the units that you can use to great effect against cavalry. And it's one of the reasons I do have a newfound respect for Ariador. You know, I have dismissed them in the past, and wrongly so. You can see that over here we were victorious. Most of my forest shell captains are dead, however. I've only got, well, 38 of them. That's actually a pretty healthy number of them. But I've also got quite a lot of Doomdine Rangers, albeit out of ammunition. And this is going to be the problem. You can see that Dale, just coming forward in a big blob. Something changes in the course of battle. But defeat seems almost and most of my pikemen, I'm just trying to sort of cover my retreat so I can get my hidden squad into some sort of position where I can make a final stand. So I'm just sort of trying to use the pikemen to slow down Dale's advance. These guys are actually, they've actually come back from routing, which is interesting. I don't think that my ally has got much of anything left, to be honest with you. What have we got over here? We've got some royal guard firing some missiles. Oh yeah, we've got one of my units of Dunedain Rangers got into battle down here against some of the... Um, some of the skirmishers, but they don't have they don't have nearly enough to beat the Athala Rangers in melee now. But again, just trying to cover my retreat at this point. But we have lost this battle physically. We can see that the dwarves are finally sort of getting into the fight. Again, I'm trying to hold back these hammers of Gundabad with Dunedain Rangers. It's not going to end well for my Rangers, unfortunately, especially not the Dalian Paladins. They're going to end up bludgeoned to death. A fine paste will be all that remains. You can see that I'm really just trying to sort of fall back to this hill where I can make some sort of final stand with my crossbows. But even then, the battle is lost, unfortunately, for us. See, the orc bodyguards are routing. As expected from the goblins. All of these clouds of dust, all of these very depleted units. But it was still... I did like how, how the initial confrontation went between WK's team and my team. The I do think that... Pursue and run them down. I do think that that's it's a very sporting battle when when both of us just sort of charge in and and have a good have a good scrap in the middle of the map because again I'm not really a fan of overly defensive battles and you can see that over here I'm sort of using my my hidden squad now it wasn't really in the in this vein that I wanted to and unfortunately have fled the field like cowards. there goes Dol Amroth but unfortunately this isn't the best engagement for the Black Balls. Dale Swordmasters are not particularly armoured so their armour piercing axes won't do a lot of damage and also Dale Swordmasters are very good against unarmoured targets of course and the Black Balls have literally no armour so unfortunately for me my Black Balls won't be as effective as I know they can be they only cost 600 and they can be brutally effective for that the Thieves of Tharvan, on the other hand, will do very well against the Thala Rangers. They melted an entire unit very quickly. And against lightly armoured, lower tier units in melee, they will clean up. And against a lot of these Lake Town units, in particular the Lake Town Spearmen, the Thieves of Tharvan will do very, very well. They don't have very many men in the unit, it's worth saying. But they only cost 500 as well, and considering the equivalent, the Hashari costs 900, I believe, that's a big saving. You can do the same sort of hidden death squad with Harad, but it is... A significantly greater investment. It's going to be more effective if it works, but with Ariador, you can also afford some pretty decent, some pretty decent mainline troops in addition to that. Whereas with Harad, you have to sort of save your money elsewhere, which is why I think I prefer doing it as Ariador. And you can see my gatekeepers are firing, and they are also being sort of focused down, unfortunately by the by the Dalian skirmishers, as is expected. And unfortunately, these Dalesmen are managing to get into melee with my gatekeepers. Interestingly enough, the gatekeepers will. Well, not interestingly enough, really. The gatekeeper should easily beat the Dalesmen once they get their bills down. You can see that all of my routing units, this is really the last stand. And unfortunately, there are also still Earls, which is very bad for me. I'm also trying to target those Forest Shell... No, not the Forest Shell gatekeepers. I'm trying to target the Dale Swordmasters with my crossbows. And they did work. You can see that the Dale Swordmasters are largely all dead now, thanks to the, thanks to the crossbows. And this means the Black Balls will last a little bit longer. You see these Lake Town pikemen now taking on the Black Bolts, which again is not the best fight for my Black Bolts, unfortunately. They have lost half their men. 
the very cool looking Avari Elder Archers charging forward to try and engage my crossbows in melee so I can only get a few more volleys off but the gatekeepers are a very efficient infantry unit as well so I will at least get a few more kills and you can see just how many they kill in one volley and that's why I think crossbows should have less ammunition across the board just to balance things out a little bit Oof. gatekeepers are a very efficient unit in melee as I've said before and the Avari Elder Archers, with all those losses they're taking, will lose, and so will the Dalesmen. Let's have a look at what my Thieves of Tharbad are doing. You can see that they still have over half their units remaining. No, 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 please, frame rate. Please. I won't look at the bridges anymore, I promise. Good lord. You can see that the Thieves... Defeat does seem certain because, you know, there are some elite... Oh no, I've looked at the bridges again. I apologise, game, please. Please don't crash on me. The Thieves of Tharbad will do very well against Lake Town units, but now when there's elite units like Royal Guard coming in, that's when they that's when they start to struggle. Again, they're very much a, a flash in the pan kind of unit. You can see that there's actually a unit of of Dunedain Rangers that I managed to save. So they're gonna rear charge these Athala Rangers. You can see these Earls back here, only six of them remaining. So again, these are these Athala Rangers should lose, which is more kills for me and my ally. Although, again, my army is really the only one left. As soon as Dale and the Dwarves finish me off, that's it. It's over. And now that these Lake Town Pikemen are in melee. Oh yes, that's a good point. My general was the only one still alive in my cav unit, and I used him to sort of block the advance of these Earls, but he paid for it with his life. The Gatekeepers, as a sort of pike unit, will win one-to-one -one with, with Lake Town Pikemen, because they are low tier. But again, I, I really don't have the men to sort of cover every angle at this point. Uh, fight through the lag, fight through the lag. Remove bridges. No map should have bridges anymore unless they can be fixed. Hammers of Gundabad in the background there. I do feel for the dwarf player, the dwarven player Bobo, because again, he, he didn't really get to do much of anything in this fight because the fight was largely over by the time he got here. But that's the price you, you pay for being the dwarves and having a very slow moving army and trying to get into the action. Again, that's the Achilles heel. You need to have some more mobile units. Even some of the war goat units would have, wouldn't have gone amiss as the dwarves because they would have then been able to get into the fight a little bit more quickly. But again, I, I think Dale and the dwarves were hoping for a little bit more of a defensive fight in the streets and they were denied that. And that is ultimately why, in terms of a scored resolution, they will definitely be finishing in last in this fight. But who will have won out of us and... The Misty Mountains and Umbar. Again, the goblins do have significantly more men per unit, so we do have to bear that in mind. So I think that the initial engagements went pretty well for them, but as the as the mainline fight wore on, I think me and my ally and Double Amor were able to blunt their attacks. And what pushes us over the edge, I think, is that we were able to field more of a force to kill some of Dale's troops, which may well lead to us winning this fight. I can't actually remember the exact kill totals, but I'm pretty sure that that is what happened. I'm pretty sure that in terms of scored resolution, me and my ally would have won this one. But of course, if you if you care about the physical victory more, then yes, Dale and the Dwarves were able to win this pretty comprehensively. So this is the last stand, essentially. You can see that based on the amount of frames left, there's still just over a thousand frames remaining. My Forest Shell Gatekeepers are able to hold the line against this sort of thing for quite a long time, despite the fact that they are being thoroughly overwhelmed. And there are elite units in there as well. There are a few Earls. It's not just low-tier Lake Town units. And actually, look, there's King Brand. And actually, I do have some returning Carvelin footmen that I'm actually charging down the hill. My Dunedain Rangers are routing, but... My Forestal Gatekeepers will stand for a little while longer against this low-tier infantry. And good for them. Yes, this is a slightly shorter matchup, of course. But next, I think it will be a wintry Edoras siege, which I, I'm pretty sure will be a very good one based on what I've heard and what I've seen. You know, again, I would have liked to have done the, the wintry Minas Tirith one, but again, the, the, the lag and there were a few technical issues, which I don't know why, but the replay doesn't seem to want to cooperate too much with me. It was like, the frame rate when I was looking at those bridges over there, it was like that for the whole time, and again, it's, it's kind of unfortunate, but that's kind of the nature of, of playing on a game as old as this. And also, my graphical mods probably don't help matters, but again, I don't really want to go on two lower settings because the game does look a bit like garbage on the lowest settings and we have to put up with that enough when we actually play the games live. And here we can 
see the cars and the footmen, they're wavering and exhausted. I think they're going to actually rout as soon as they get into combat here. Yes, they are. So they basically came back to say, come on, gatekeepers, look, it's okay, you can give up, we've lost. Run for the hills. Flee, flee for your lives. Yeah, there they go. So that's my army. Completely broken. And the, the Dale death blob was successful in, in taking us down. You can see that the dwarves were not really able to get into the fight because they only lost two men. They did kill 126 though, that was presumably with their crossbows at the end when they were showering into my cardinal and footmen and my forestal gatekeepers. But also as you can see that in a combined total both me and my ally were the top two players in terms of kills so even with the additional men that the Misty Mountains would have brought that does put us on top really. And yeah, that was a, a pretty good performance by my ally of course he managed to kill most of the Misty Mountains forces. And honestly, I, I do have a new appreciation of Ariador again. The Mounted Battle Ready Tuna Dine doing a very good job. I think that the fact that they were able to pincer those Warlords of means they instantly paid for themselves. They also helped against the Wargs. They did significantly worse against the Earls, which is unfortunate, but again, it can't really be helped. The Forest Shell Gatekeepers, despite only being in the battle really right at the very end, they were still my two best units, which again, still just reinforces my belief that they are easily the best Ariador unit. My Dunedain Rangers did pretty well as well, again, assisting my ally's skirmish line, which is presumably where he got the most of his kills as well. And my infantry corps, well, let's have a look. The Thieves of Tharbad, considering, again, they were only in the battle right at the very end, and they had to deal with a huge death blob of Dale's forces, they were still able to get nearly 100 kills each, which, considering they're a unit 50, is pretty damn good. I know that they had chevrons by the end, the Blackwolds, unfortunately, they only got 13 kills because they were up against a unit that they really aren't designed to go up against. So yeah, not not great, but I, I am still I am still a big fan of them. Battle Ready Dunedain as well, 41 kills, not great for them, but they were able to hold the line against significantly more elite units. The Bandit Javis getting most of those 39 kills were on Blackback Berserkers, so it is gonna that's very good kills for them. The Bandits, the fact that they managed to get kills at all against the units that they were up against, those were Warlords of Umbar and Blackback Berserkers, is very impressive. And my Forest Shell Captains, easily my most effective infantry unit, as they always will be for Eriador, because of course they are in the same mould as the Haven Guard. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this free-for-all. Again, it wasn't quite what I was expecting when I first hosted the lobby. I was expecting a little bit more of a grind fest on the streets, which I am still eager to do, because Karasant does have a few avenues into the settlement could be very interesting to do a more a bigger scale free for all so there's four teams of two instead of just three teams because then i feel as though the settlement would have to be utilized a little bit more as i think that the umbar misty mountains deployment kind of necessitated their tactics of charging us in the open field but yes i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you look forward to revisiting karasant one day but i hope you look forward more to the to the snowy Edoras map which i hope to do next so i hope you'll join me for that